Hi, Lee Phillips here. I want to talk about a concept called doing business as, a DBA. Uh, you're using a different name to do your business under, basically. Uh, some, it, it's a state thing. You register with the state, you're DBA. Some states call it a uh, fictitious name or an assumed name. So you kind of got to figure out what your state calls it. But basically what you're doing is you're doing business as this different name. So I've got my business. That could be a sole proprietorship or partnership or an LLC or corporation or whatever it is. I've got my business, but I also want to do, name, do, do business under this other name. That could be for a marketing purpose. Uh, it might be easier to, to see if marketing works better with this name than our official company name. So we set up a DBA and we register it with the state. Each state has its registration process. It's going to be at the state business office or at the secretary of state or whatever it is. So look and see where you'd file your corporation, your LLC, and that'll be where it is. It's easy. You simply say, I want to use this name. Now, if the name's not available, some other company has the name. You can't use that name in your state. And this is only for a state. And in some states, it's only local. So you've got to figure out how broadly this gives me rights to use this name. I could have Joe's Pizza in one area of the state and Joe's Pizza in another area of the state in some states. Most states, or pretty much all states, if I file a corporation or an LLC, I get that name for the whole state. But DBAs may be a little different, so check with your state as to how broad it protects your use of the name. Now, it's still your company or your sole proprietorship. If it's a sole proprietorship, generally you have to use your own name, either that or if you want to do business under a fictitious name, a DBA, then you have to file with the state that my sole proprietorship is doing business as a DBA. The DBA doesn't give you any asset protection. It doesn't give you any tax. You're still taxed as the sole proprietorship, or if your LLC has a DBA, you're still taxed as your LLC. So you're just assuming a different name, primarily for marketing. But if I want a bank account, if I want the credit card stuff, the merchant account, to read this other name, the DBA, then I have to file a DBA. Otherwise, the banks and the credit card merchant accounts and that stuff, they're not going to deal with you. So you need to file a DBA. That's a little different than reserving a name. I can go to the state for a real cheap price. I can reserve a name and it gives me 30, 60, 90 days to use that name to set up my company. I'd say just set up your company. Don't worry about reserving the name. <clears throat> you can go to the state website and you can check under name availability. That's usually what it's called. And see if that name is available in your state. Now, I told you, no tax consequence. You still file under the taxes under the business, the real business. Asset protection, no asset protection. In fact, I'm going to say that if it's Lee Phillips doing business as uh, Orange Crush, then I need to put on my business cards and in my advertising and stuff for Orange Crush, I need to put DBA of Legalese Inc. or whatever it is. That identifies that DBA as a corporation or as an LLC or however you identify it. You can't just put Orange Crush LLC because Orange Crush isn't an LLC. It's Orange Crush, a DBA of Legalese LLC. And that would allow me to get the asset protection. I put the public on notice that, yeah, I'm using Orange Crush, but you're really dealing with Legalese at LLC. So be careful on that. Always identify 
where the asset protection comes from. Lawsuits in the name of the DBA? Yeah, usually. But wait a minute. I'm not really protecting that name. Now, the state may protect that name for me. But if I want to protect Orange Crush, I should probably trademark it. Always put the little TM on it. All you have to do is put TM. That tells people that I intend to use this as my trademark. An Orange Crush could be a trademark. It's registered as a DBA, but I've also registered it as a trademark. Now, if you actually do register it with the Patent Trademark Office, then you're not going to use the little TM. You're going to use the circle R, registered. So that would be the way to protect my Orange Crush name, not only in the state, but throughout the nation. Once I register it with the Patent and Trademark Office, I have that name everywhere in the nation. The DBAs, some of them need to be re-registered every five years or some such thing in the state. Uh, trademarks have to be re-registered, have to be renewed every so often. So watch the, the deadlines on those, but, uh, but that would protect my name. This isn't exactly a, a name uh, reservation, and it's not a company name. Frankly, if I'm in a state where it's really pretty cheap to do the actual filing of an LLC, just file another name, Orange Crush LLC, and forget about the DBA. That means you've got to have two tax returns, and it means you've got to, got to go through two scenarios of the LLC, but it would actually give you asset protection and, and tax and everything separate from your other company. This is Lee Phillips talking about DBAs. Yep, you can use DBAs and they're relatively valuable. Uh, now don't forget to register and all of that stuff. If you are doing an LLC, please get my LLC mini course. It's going to teach you how to use it. If you go with the legal sites on the internet, if you go with the lawyers, they don't teach you how to use it. Uh, the LLC mini course teaches you how to use it. You've got to use it to get the asset protection. You've got to use it to get the tax benefits. Now the DBAs, they don't do that for you. That's just, I'm operating under the DBA, under the assumed name. Lee Phillips, best of luck in your business and let's make them successful.